Hi guys, welcome to Ideal Home Show. Um, my name is JJ Goodman, I'm from London Cocktail Club. London Cocktail Clubs. We've got a few bars in town. Um, we host a few master classes. We're in the company called Best in Glass who invited us to come down today. Uh, they supply cocktail equipment to people's houses to give you guys the opportunity to mix at home. The second drink we're going to be doing today is, uh, is a hot punch. So quite exciting, we thought we'd talk about mulled wine. Now the recipe we're using for our mulled wine is absolutely brilliant. Um, if you want to make a classic mulled wine, and then we're just going to bang a load of chocolate in it. So if you want to kind of take the chocolate out to make a classic style mulled wine, feel free. I've got a feeling that once you try it, you might be a little bit addicted to the chocolate version. Or at least I hope so. Um, I like quite a full bodied wine. Um, today I've, I've chosen a Shiraz. Um, purely because it's kind of got a lot more like dark berry flavours. Um, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to be a wine buff. Um, but there are lighter styles of wine and there are darker styles of wine. And this is one of the darker, richer, heavier styles of wine. And I kind of recommend this for mixing in general. Um, I'm just going to cook off a bit of the excess alcohol. I only really want this for the real flavour. I base this recipe for you guys around a whole bottle as well. So you kind of work to one bottle, which will feed about 10 people. Um, we've made much, we, this is going to be distributed round in mass, so don't worry that only 10 of you are going to get to try it. A great drink to start the day out with, I think. Um, it's kind of like a midday uh, drink. Uh, people are arriving at the house. We kind of tend to eat around 3 o'clock at our house. We aim to drink eat about three o'clock at our house. It tends to be about six. Um, we tend to have a few drinks in between the, the three and six periods. This is one that I'm trying to impose on everybody and they're, and they're loving it. Um, into that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in all my spices. I'm gonna do that quite quickly. Uh, the usual suspects, really, cinnamon. Um, I'm using um, a little bit of star anise. I'm a big fan of star anise. Um, I literally use it in most things. It's a cracking spice to use. It kind of brings out a lot of what you call like higher notes. Kind of uh, when you drink something, we call that the light notes, the drinks that kind of come in last. And it kind of extends the flavor of the drink or gives it more complexity through a longer amount of time. Um, avoid hitting the tree. Um, I'm gonna throw in some, uh, some cloves, so some whole cloves. Classic Christmas, you can't go wrong with cloves. I'm using the measurement, which I just call a punch at the moment i.e. just throw it in. Um, when we talk about punching, I talk about about a handful, like a punch of this and a punch of that. Um, but you can't really kind of put so much flavour in, you can put in not enough. So just play with it, test it, add stuff. And you can leave this ordinarily on the hob for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Once it starts to macerate a little bit more, give it another taste. If you need something else, throw it down. Uh, nutmeg, I don't think we can live without at Christmas. I don't actually know what happens to the nutmeg for the rest of the year. Um, apparently it gets stuck in the container. That's where it is. Oh, there we go. Um, so a whole heap of nutmeg in there. Um, and some sultanas or raisins. Again, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but with the recipes that you've got in front of you, everything that we're kind of using is bought really from like just a standard like, uh, supermarket. There's all stuff that you can like leave in the fridge that will just sit there nicely or in the cupboard. It's not going to go off. It's not like you have to run out and buy some unusual ingredient that you're only going to use once. That's a really important part of the recipes I wanted to do for today. So these are all ticking away nicely. Um, I'm going to add my dark chocolate first. So I said about 100 grams of dark chocolate. Get that in there. That's going to give it a real richness. And we cannot, for some reason, go a Christmas without Terry's chocolate orange, which baffles me because on Boxing Day we still have a ton of Terry's chocolate orange and all the way into January. So I thought it'd be really fun to find a recipe where we can use this and actually put it to really good juice. So I'm going to add half a Terry's chocolate orange in. Let's give it like that nice subtle orangey flavour, which again is really, really Christmas. It's come away nicely for a change. So we kind of throw it in. There's a bit of this kind of ad hoc, just throw it in, add a little bit in. This, what, this is one drink that has quite a lot of ingredients into it. Um, but again, a lot of these you kind of have kicking around the house in general. Probably from the previous Christmas where you had to go and make a Christmas cake and just sat onto it for a little while. 
I'm going to give this a little stir to start to get that chocolate melting through now. I don't know if you guys can start to smell it a little bit coming across. And last, well, last two ingredients into here, we're going to add some alcohol. Now I've gone for a Drambuie. Drambuie is a cracking um, like whiskey based liqueur. It's full of orange, full of cinnamon, full of those nutmeg style flavours, um, full of spice. And I think it's a really kind of nice alternative to like a straight whiskey to add in another complexity of flavour. This is one ingredient that you might not have generally kicking around. Oh, well, so we're, we're going to throw it in. 150 mils we're going to throw in here. And a bit for luck. The last uh, but not least ingredient we're going to be throwing in is a little bit of jam. Jam and jam drinks we talk a lot about. As far as when it comes to creating a lot of cocktails at home, I think there's this kind of thing where you have to like go out and buy like a thousand ingredients to make one drink. Some stuff you only use some of, some stuff you use all of. Um, but jams are a great preservative. It's got the natural sweetness, it's already in there. A couple of spoons of jam, some lemon juice and a bit of gin, give that a shake. That is a, that is a cocktail that will get you through the winter. It's the winter, the summer, happily. The backup is a great, great winter drink. It doesn't go off. If you buy it as an added ingredient, you find yourself with a few excess like pots of jam. I mean, Jesus, we've got enough in the fridge as it is. Stick it on your toast and you'll get through it. So it's not like a wasted product. Cheap as well. You know, you tend to spend under a pound for, for a pot of jam and to get that consistency. Like no two strawberries taste the same. Strawberry jam though, from pot to pot, you get that kind of consistency when you're making drinks for a lot of people. So I'm a big ambassador of it and uh, as a way of adding flavor and sweetness to a drink. So I'm going to give this a little stir and I'm going to add about 100 grams to the top of this. It's about kind of like four spoons. Maybe four and a half. Um, so the samples are coming out now for the for drink two. It's good, huh? Yeah? That's, that's about right, isn't it? Honestly, we stayed up like for about four hours after shift, like reworking it, reworking it, reworking it. I just turned up, I was like, I want to make a mulled wine with Terry's chocolate orange. All well, my bartenders looked at me like I was an absolute nutcase. Um, but we threw it together, we played around, we tweeted a few times, and it, it's come up really well. Is it everyone fans? Yeah? There's a lot of confident nodding. There's a lot of confident sampling, actually. I think we've got a bit left over.